following is from a cooperative project for acquiring skills essential to learning. Something's inside. Here. I can open it. What's that? A musical instrument? Look at this. How funny they dress. It's one of those old games they used to play. Tiddlywinks? Frisbee. But it has a hole in it. Probably an early prototype. Let's see. Why would all this be in a plastic container? Let's find out. What is this? Identification. A cylinder on top of a truncated cone with two flat ends. 47 centimeters on the top, 74 centimeters on the bottom, and 91 centimeters tall. Composed of plastic and fitted with sealed opening for entry to the interior. It is a plastic container. I could have told you that. And this is a Frisbee, right? Wrong. Not a Frisbee? Negative. It has a hole in it. Told you. Hmm. We're not getting any place. We better ask it better questions or we'll never find out. Why are all these things together in a container? Probability. The container of objects is meant to be a time capsule representing life in 1970. A time capsule? The term time capsule was coined in the year 1939 by the builders of a similar container. And what's inside is what people used and lived with at that time. Ah, I see. To preserve things for the future. Affirmative. Let's make one ourselves. Is it easy? Negative. Designing a time capsule takes a great deal of thought and knowledge about culture. Oh. Maybe we should ask for more information about time capsules and what they mean. Are there other time capsules? Affirmative. Doesn't look like a time capsule. But it is from another place, another time. It's like a capsule of time, right? Affirmative. The tomb of King Tutankhamun of ancient Egypt was not planned as a time capsule to be examined in later centuries. But the objects and treasures carefully sealed in it still represent a period of time associated with a particular culture. 
By studying the actual objects used in Egypt in the year 1352 BC, archaeologists and historians were able to tell quite a bit about the life of one 16-year-old King Tutankhamun. Hmm, a rich kid. <laughs> What if you had something from the past and nothing much to go on? No written history, no photographs. Something that didn't look like anything. Like a kobak set? Yes. How do you know what that is? At Inuit Settlement in Canada, we are keeping alive the old ways, so they will not be forgotten. Even today, we pound whale blubber to burn in our Kavaksik, our oil lamp. The world will never forget how we once lived. I see. The old skills are handed down from generation to generation, so they'll never be forgotten. Suppose everybody forgot. Suppose something is so old, nobody can remember. Here at Coster, we have over 8,000 years of human life preserved. And we're trying to figure out what life was like for these people over that time. Is that me a measure then? I'd like to have you measure from a specific point, maybe right here, the thickness, if we can find the bottom in the horizon. This is the remains of an ancient village, thousands of years old. There are house remains here, human burials, fireplaces, the whole range of their foods, whatever else you can think that they had in their daily life. There's an amazing amount to be learned here, if only we can find how to read these remains. I think you can go ahead and pull it out. Oh my gosh, look at it. What is it? Well, it looks like a hoe. Well, if it's a hoe, it means that they were farmers. Yeah. Well, just because it looks like a hoe doesn't mean that it was a hoe. Too often, we interpret artifacts in ways that are familiar to us, but that may not be the best way to do it. That may look like a hole, but we have to prove that it was actually used as a hole by the ancient people. All these were found down by the river, just like the one that you found. Look at the marks. The marks, are, they sort of look the same. Maybe we can ask Red to make another one like this, and we can try hauling and see what the results are. That would be a good idea. We could have Greg make us one. We could put it on a handle, and we could try it and see what happens. You can get this down to pretty close to that size. Now that's local, uh, local church. Local church looks like this must have been made from. How'd you imagine it? That's what we're going to show you what to look like. This is you find tools like these at the site too. That's how Greg knows what they're making out of. Uh, hammer stones we find. We found lots of them at the site. About that size. And bone antlers. Greg studies all these things, so he knows exactly what they use to make them. Well, there's a different place you can tell which tool they were working on and what stage of the tool they were working on. Yeah. Big. Mm -hmm. Almost got it. Just about perfect. A little sharper edge on this for you, and then uh, you can take it and experiment with it. Okay. Look at that. Oh my gosh, it's just not exact. See those edges? Oh, it's sharp enough. It's sharp. Yeah. As soon as we've got it uh, fastened on, then we can go right up into the garden area. And start working the soil. It's kind of neat because, see, this is a time of year when people would be working in the gardens. So what we're doing in our own way is trying something that the people might have been doing themselves. I don't really look that much to light. No. A 
tool that looks like a hoe but isn't. What other evidence do we have that might give us an understanding? Perhaps the river is the clue. Is this how they made the boat? Uh-huh. We're sure that this is a good way that they made it. So we're burning it a little bit with the coals and then we're scraping. We're burning and scraping, burning and scraping. I think we've got enough wear on it now that we can start comparing. You want to get that one you found? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now see this part here that's lighter colored, this is equivalent to this part that's underneath the wrappings. The gray that's here, we're getting over here on this section there. We've got a very strong indication that it was used for something like uh, making a canoe. Can you imagine that this tool that you found was used to make a canoe maybe 2,000 years ago? So what have we learned from this one artifact? We've learned that these people were hunters and gatherers for thousands of years without agriculture, traveling on these rivers, sometimes over long distances in canoes made by tools just like this one here. I see what you mean about understanding culture by looking at objects. Can we see some people putting together time capsules? <laughs> In August and September 1977, two extraordinary spacecraft called Voyager were launched. These space vehicles will eventually leave our solar system as messengers of Earth to the universe. These two Voyager spacecraft were designed to explore the planets Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus before escaping from the solar system. In a sense, the spacecraft itself is a kind of time capsule, but in addition, there is mounted on it this plaque, and inside is a phonograph record which contains images and sounds of our world. A record is able to record both sounds and images and should be capable of surviving for millions of years in space. There are also instructions on the plaque explaining in picture language how the record should be used. We have no idea what kind of intelligent extraterrestrial beings might someday find this capsule. We can't communicate with them in English or any other language. Instead, we have tried to find ways of using mathematics and images and sounds to explain to them where this capsule came from and to reveal the nature of our life and culture. There are 116 photographs in this time capsule. We have selected a wide variety of images of Earth. We have pictures from many different cultures and parts of the world showing people leading their daily lives. We've tried to use these pictures and these sounds to give a cross-section of our world and of ourselves. It's very hard to imagine what some other creatures could make of all this. But it's an interesting exercise for us, ourselves, to try to condense into a hundred images, into half an hour of music, what we think is important about humanity and about the world that we live on. This was a massive project, sending a part of ourselves to the stars. But each time capsule that's prepared is a record of a moment in time and of a group of people. This capsule is a part of our history and a present for the future. Okay, let's start to make our time capsule. I put a throttle in it. Why? Would that tell the future what we are like? What about a loan? Think About is supported by state and provincial agencies working through the Agency for Instructional Television. Together, serving education.